Welcome Wildcats. In this unit we will be going over the Unit 2 uh, review for the nuclear chemistry exam. Some practical applications for uses of radioactivity. Uh, in the medical field you can use it to diagnose medical problems and treat diseases. Um, they can use it to uh, treat cancerous tumors. They can also use it you know, as a tracer to detect if certain uh, elements are being picked up by certain organs in the body. Uh, agricultural uses, uh, farmers can use them to use uh, tracers to test effects of different herbicides, uh, pesticides, fertilizers, anything like that. Uh, they can monitor any livestock that consume these and look for high levels of herbicide, pesticides, fertilizers, so forth and so on. Um, you can use it to uh, date fossils, things that were once living that contained carbon. We can use nuclear power uh, for an energy source. Um, we use it to produce electricity. Uh, the Navy uses it to power submarines and aircraft carriers and so forth. Um, other military uses, you can use it for, uh, for weaponry. The hydrogen bomb is just a, a fusion bomb using hydrogen as the fuel. And it's actually triggered by a fission bomb, which is the uranium bomb, one using heavy nuclei, splitting into smaller nuclei with a chain reaction. And another use would be uh, for industrial purposes. A lot of times when you have like ground meat, like hamburger, sometimes they will irradiate it to kill bacteria. To complete the following table you have to look at the clues provided. Um, the first type of decay, notice it said the speed is the fastest. That is indicative of gamma decay. And the symbol for gamma is the gamma symbol. Sometimes you'll put a zero up here for no mass and a zero down here for no charge and so like we stated charge gamma has no charge gamma has no size because it's not really matter gamma is electromagnetic energy um, it has fastest speed it has a very high ability to penetrate and it is blocked by lead um, the next one you'll notice that minimum block by is paper. That's indicative of alpha. And then alpha particles, there's a couple of ways that you will see alpha represented. Um, because alpha is basically a helium nuclei, sometimes you see it written simply like this. Other times you will see the symbol alpha. Uh, the charge, because it is a helium nuclei, is 2 plus. There are two protons, no electrons to balance it out. It has a mass of four AMUs because, once again, two protons, two neutrons. Out of all the particles, it is the slowest. It has a very low penetrating ability. <clears throat> the last one, beta. Uh, beta is really a high-speed electron, so sometimes you see it listed like this. No mass, charge of negative one. Other times you will see beta written in this fashion. Uh, it does have a charge of negative one because it is really a high-speed electron. Uh, and because it's an electron, it essentially has no mass. It's one two-thousandth of an AMU. Um, the speed is somewhat between there. It's medium. Same thing with the penetrating ability, and can be stopped by a sheet of aluminum. The nucleus is the part of the atom that undergoes change during radioactive decay. Uh, largely, uh, an atom's nucleus becomes unstable uh, when the, the ratio of protons to neutrons isn't just right. And as you recall, you know, looking at a graph representing the, the band of nuclear stability. Uh, when you have relatively small elements, the, the ratio of protons to neutrons is usually about one to one. 
and as you get to the heavier and heavier elements uh, towards the bottom of the table, uh, the ratio shifts to about one proton to one and a half neutrons. And so this instability really comes from either having you know too many or too few neutrons that are that are exerting that strong nuclear force and overcoming the electrostatic repulsion of all those protons packed in the nucleus tightly. In this problem we're going to start with writing the symbol for lead 210. So we've got PB. 210 is the mass. And the atomic number for lead, once again, 82. And so this is releasing a beta particle. So as you recall, a beta particle is really a high-speed electron. And so no mass, negative 1 for the charge. So what number plus 0 is 210? Once again, that's got to be 210. Uh, what number plus a negative 1 is 82? That is 83. We're forming bismuth. To begin, we need to determine the number of half-lives that have passed. And so we know the time elapsed is 57.2 days. And I know that the half-life of this particular radioisotope is 14.3 days. If you divide the time elapsed by the half-life, you will determine that 4 half-lives have elapsed. Now it's just a matter of taking that original 4 milligram sample and determining the remaining amount after 4 half-lives. So starting out with 4 milligrams, if I divide it in half 4 times, that will in reveal how much is left. So after the first half-life, there are two milligrams remaining. After the second, there would be one milligram remaining. After the third, you would have a half of a milligram. And then finally, after the fourth, you would have 0.25 milligrams.